Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm coming on to talk to you about curly girl tips and tricks. A lot of questions that you guys have asked me that I have tried to answer and answering them individually gets a little bit time consuming. So I wanted to just pop on, get my computer open and talk to you about what some of those tips and tricks are. So in this community that we exist in, um, there is a wealth of information. You can find any curly girl on here that has a hundred ways to do um, anything and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I put together what has worked best for me and is my truth. So I wanted to spew this back to you. Beautiful word choice, I know. Um, this is going to be all over the board, so bear with me. I wrote it down because I can certainly get long-winded. I feel like I give a tip or a trick and that leads to 100 other questions. That's awesome. That means you guys are curious and you want to try it. But I'm just going to try to glaze over it and just give it like straight to the point and we'll see where that goes. Of course, if you have questions, shoot them my way. Um, I am catching up on some messages in my inbox, but I'll do my best to answer you as quickly as possible. Okay, so... First and foremost, know your hair. That means um, know your porosity, know your density, all of these things will translate into the types of products that make the most sense for you. Um, I have in my bio a link, it's a link tree, so when it pops up, there's a texture quiz in there that's from naturallycurly.com. I highly recommend you go through that first. Once you've done that, there is, um, I always refer people to this Facebook page, It's Curly Girl Method International Support Group on Facebook. They offer albums and files loaded with products by hair type. Um, and that's where I started, and I ended up using the same products for nine months. So that's just my testament to the page. But they are very strict Curly Girl Method, so don't post anything in there that's not Curly Girl. Um, next. Um, a, a note about porosity. Um, I'm not a fan of the cup test. If you know what the cup test is, it's when you take a strand of your hair and you put it into a cup, even if it floats, sits in the middle or sinks, that tells you what your porosity is. I don't believe in that test. And the reason why is you can take strands um, from different parts of your head and they're all gonna do different things. And it also depends on what's in your hair already. So you could have something that's in your hair and you forgot and it'll make your strands sink um, or whatever. I, I just, I don't think it works. My favorite method to test porosity is to run your take a strand of hair run your finger up it backwards um, I'm high porosity and I know that means if you run your finger backwards up your strand and it's a bumpy ride that then your hair is high porosity because the, the pores of your strand are open and then the other one that I really like is the wet test so if you get into the shower and it takes you a while to get your hair wet then you I think it means you might be low porosity. Anyway, look it up because I don't want to give you the wrong information. But depending on how quickly or slowly your hair gets wet, that can say a lot about your porosity. Um, ingredient lists. So ingredients are listed in order from the most to the least. Uh, this is also true for food. So if you're ever curious if something has a lot of glycerin in it, if it's in the first couple of ingredients, yes it does. If it's at the bottom, probably not that much. You'll see most things start with water though. Um, but read that because that can tell you a lot about protein sensitivities if you notice my hair really likes protein but there's this one product that's really making my hair go crazy well proteins like the second item listed in there just an example um, which leads me to my next one do not trust labels I have had so many products that I've seen that it says no sulfate no silicone no paraben no drying alcohols and then you read it and there's a sulfate in the list again it might be at the bottom of the list and they don't really have to include it so they can say no sulfate but if you're strict curly girl and you don't want sulfates in your hair then you're gonna have to read the ingredient list uh let's see um your favorite curly or wavy who appears to have similar hair to you may actually need very different things so for example um you have a natural blonde with long curly hair and then you have a color treated blonde um, with naturally wavy curly hair. Um, the one of them, the maybe not color treated, might have a protein sensitivity, sensitivity and have a different porosity, and the color treated one might have high porosity and their hair loves protein. So, yes, definitely use those people as guidance and as tools for information if you can. Um, 
but take what they suggest for products or what works best for them with a grain of salt. You're never gonna know unless you try it, but that doesn't mean their truth is your truth when it comes to products. Um, let's see, detangling. If you choose to use a brush, wet or dry, you wanna start detangling your hair from the bottom. I see so many videos where people are brushing like this. You're gonna make it so much worse, you're actually gonna cause a lot of damage to your hair. The way to decrease the amount of damage um, or minimize it completely is to just slowly work your way from the bottom up um, and then go around. So do it in sections. Um, if you're in transition and hate it as much as I did, um, Learn some easy updos to get you through the thick of it. There is nothing worse than spending two hours on a wash day and you're learning the curly girl method and your hair turns out like bleh. Like it just, I feel your pain. My skin is crawling right now thinking about how many times this has happened. So I suggest finding an updo that works for you that you'd be comfortable um, just kind of rocking for a day and then try again. But um, make sure that they're gentle updos, nothing that's gonna pull your hair really tight, um, that can cause extra breakage, things that are just gentle on your hair. Um, the Joyful Wavy has a ton of really fun, easy, very cutely named updos. Um, so if you're looking for something, those are really fun, creative ones that you can look into. Um, let's see, when diffusing, Finish with a cool shot of air. This sounds really goofy. I know a lot of people know this already, but you've seen and heard people talk about pixie diffusing. Sometimes they're on cool the whole time. If you're like me, I actually like to use a bit of heat, so I go on medium. If I hover diffuse, I even go to high, but I always, before I finish, do a cool shot, which means just flip it to cool or hit the little cool button on your diffuser and just kind of hold it in your hair. It helps set your curl or your wave. Um, what else? On very humid days, okay, this will not work for everybody. This just works for me. On very humid days, I don't scrunch out all of the crunch. The reason why is because the humidity level in the air is naturally gonna soften and break, and break your cast. Um, so to avoid that extra puff and frizz, I actually leave quite a bit of my cast intact. Um, haircuts and growth. I'm gonna open a can of worms here. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna try to keep this as simple as possible. Cutting your hair will not make it grow faster. Taking something off here will not make the hair come out of your head quicker. What it will do is prevent a split from going up the strand and breaking more off so you'll end up having to take more off in the next haircut, if that makes sense. So yes, get your trims, keep up with those cuts, but don't expect that you cutting it will make you the hair come out of your hair follicles faster. That's a myth. Um, Take all the pictures to track your progress, especially on those really crappy days. Um, because in a month's time, when you look back you're, and you're just having a really bad hair day, you're gonna see that your current bad hair day is 10 times better than the bad hair day that you had a month ago. And you'll actually be able to see your progress. So take a ton of photos. Um, I know iPhones are a little bit annoying in storing photos from um, the whole album to individual albums, but it's a nice way to kind of sort them. So put them into an album so you can reference them. Um, and I know a lot of us on here actually started Instagram and use it as an online journal to track our hair progress and to learn. So take those pictures. Let's see. Volume tip. Don't apply products to your roots. Dry roots first to lift from the scalp. Um, pull it Oh, wait, I'm all over the place. Don't apply product to your roots. Dry your roots first to lift it from the scalp so it's not weighed down and diffuse upside down and or side to side. That's what I do. Again, it helps pull the hair away from the scalps, just gravity. And what did I say? Root clip. A lot of us already do this. Um, you don't have to root clip. You don't have to do any of these, but just for some volume tips, those are some things to try. Um, I never apply product to my roots. I don't like the feeling. I actually notice my hair is, you see, it's like, a, it's a bit flatter and smoother. I like that. So that's also a result of me using my comb in my roots. Um, diffusing, when diffusing, don't press the diffuser to your scalp. So when you have, I don't have it out here. So let's just say this is my black orchid diffuser and it's got all of the little air holes and the prongs and I'm putting it into my head. Um, 
don't press it into your scalp. You're going to actually want to leave a couple of inches so there's airflow. You should be able to feel the airflow. That will help dry your roots faster and again, it will help with volume. Um, speaking of which, scrunching out the crunch before your hair is dry. If you do that and you realize that it's still wet, just stop what you're doing and finish drying it before you keep scrunching. Um, but a really good way to test this, and I know I've mentioned some of this stuff in videos before, is a finger, like the finger pinch test. So you just stick your fingers into your hair and pinch it. You'll actually be able to feel some of that moisture on your hands. Um, it can be hard to tell sometimes if you were just drying and you did that cool shot. That cold air can make your hair cold and make it feel like there's moisture in there. But by doing this, you should be able to tell pretty easily if your hair is still wet. Um, Transitioning hair can exhibit both signs of protein and moisture over overload. So don't stress about this. If you are brand new to the Curly Girl Method, there's a hundred other things that you're gonna worry about, right? Am I using the right products? This is this the right application technique for me? Um, don't stress about it. Learn your porosity, learn your density, and then start very simple and then work your way through things. Maybe eliminate one thing at a time to start testing, but your hair can exhibit both protein and moisture overload because it's just, shocked by what you're doing to it. So don't stress about that in the beginning. There's plenty of other things um, to learn first. Let's see, brings me to my next point. You don't need all the things. I know it's so tempting in our community to want all of these products. They're getting advertised to us, they're in our face all the time. And yeah, I'm guilty of trying a hundred different things, but more recently. So if you followed me in my journey for the first nine months, all I did was use the same products and practice my application technique because, and I think Wavy Curly Chronicle said this, if you can get down your application technique, you can make almost any product work for you. That, not all, all products, of course, because your hair is going to have sensitivities and like and dislike certain things, but get the technique down and then alter products. If there's something, if you're practicing and there's something just clearly not working, then try replacing one thing at a time. Don't do a bunch of things at a time because then you're not gonna be able to figure out what it is. But you don't need all the products. Just keep it clean, keep it simple. Go off of a couple recommendations. Go to the Facebook group I suggested where the products are listed out by porosity, hair type, and go from there. Ask a lot of questions um, and focus on that first. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> You have my full attention here. Do what works for you. Um, I think in the beginning, and I've said this before, you have to learn the rules so you can learn how to break them. If you're doing the Curly Girl Method and you're getting your foundation down, you understand you know, why you're doing certain things, you're starting to see what's working for you and what's not, but you really love to color your hair and you really hate washing your hair upside down, and brushing your hair just feels really great on day three, do it. Just do it. It's your hair at the end of the day. You have to live with it. No one's gonna come bang your door down um, and tell you that you broke the rule and that you're not a part of the community anymore. You certainly are. Do what works for you. Um, do what makes you happy. You have to wear this head of hair, no one else. So if you wanna keep coloring, go for it. If you wanna brush, be my guest. Don't let anybody else tell you what you can and can't do. Unless you are a strict curly girl and you are involved in that strict curly girl community. But keep your happiness first. All right, I'll step down. So that's all I wanted to share today. If you have other tips and tricks that you wanna share with the rest of the community, feel free to send them my way. I'll fully credit them back to you. Um, or just post them in your stories and tag everybody because we wanna see them. All right. Thanks guys. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, reach out.